Hello, welcome back to day two of the Open Networking and Edge Summit. What a fantastic start to the summit. Um, thank you all for uh, uh, the positive feedback we have received. In fact, uh, we had participants from 72 countries and growing. I mean, some of, as you know, most of half of the world is sleeping at any given time, but still they made it an effort to join. So very excited today. Um, we have an amazing lineup of sessions and keynotes and, uh, you know, a lot of things that have uh, really been the top of the conversation today. Uh, what I want to call out before we jump into our first keynote is the um, a session that uh, we have hosted specifically uh, as as a evening event. Uh, again, relatively speaking, <laughs> evening. Uh, this is the um, mingle with the LF networking and LF edge boards. Everybody is free to attend, ask questions. No question is off limit. Uh, please join through the normal channels and uh, let's see where that goes. Uh, so with that said, um, and again, by the way, that's at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard. So just, you know, uh, about, you know, four hours from now. Anyway, let me just uh, briefly introduce our first keynote speaker today. Uh, Well-known industry thought leader. Uh, he's the Senior Vice President uh, of Strategy and Technology at uh, Deutsche Telekom. As we all know, Deutsche Telekom is one of the top carriers globally. Um, they and their associated partners right, uh, work on everything from orchestration to automation to edge to RAN and uh, you know, provide a great deal of community support and leadership. Um, what he's going to talk about today is how you know 5G, 5G orchestration, and then how Edge, specifically the Edge Cloud, comes in with the theme of how you know collaboration and cooperation are the name of the game as we move to the Edge. So, without any uh, further ado, please welcome Alex Choi. The edge computing potential for operators is really huge. Uh, we see great potential when it comes to consumer or business applications because the devices that we're using, be it phones or be it glasses in the future, the cars or drones, they need to have a kind of offload compute capabilities. And here, the closest part uh, to the devices are the operators, and that's why we have uh, great capabilities, be it managed latency, very good throughput, or be it a low jitter. Um, but very important is that we act as a community. We have to act fast as a community to make these capabilities available to product partners in the enterprise segment and in the consumer business. The GSMA Telco Edge Cloud Tech is a global platform solution to expose, manage, and market edge computing resources and capabilities across different networks and national boundaries, based on a combination of open technologies and telco standards. Tech is the only edge initiative targeting a global, open, and federated solution. Trials involving MNOs, customers, and ecosystem partners are essential to explore, validate, and further evolve the telco edge cloud service. This was the driver behind uh, Telefonica and Deutsche Telekom coming together with Mobile HX to demonstrate Telco Edge Cloud service. In this case, the service was a latency-sensitive XR game. Spontaneously, he said, okay, my son is a good gamer. And I said, okay, my son is a good gamer as well. Why don't we play at our homes, family versus family? In this multi-operator MEC deployment, we were both connected to Edge nodes, cloudlets in Germany and Spain, respectively, where the MobileHX platform was running. 
DTN Telefonica provided the public network connectivity between the user devices and the respective edge locations. And as well as having fun with XR, we were able to validate the value of edge computing for a differentiated XR gaming experience. We're sitting across Europe in different locations and the latency was so stable as if you were in a local desktop environment. The Telco Edge Cloud will be open and inclusive and will support existing platforms like MobileHX to accelerate the development. We will continue our collaboration with further trials as we build the Telco Edge Cloud in 2020. So to me, this is really a highlight and low latency compute capabilities from carriers are available right now. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on your location. My name is Alex Choi of Deutsche Telekom. Today, I would like to present to you about Deutsche Telekom's approach to build an open and global telco and G cloud in the age of 5G. The telco industry is changing rapidly from traditional conventional structures as we are facing significant changes on all fronts. Market-wise, NT and IT used to be very completely separate world with a little to no overlap. Now, hyperscalers have a global scale fiber connection and data centers beyond the capabilities of any single telco in the world. Therefore, we are facing tight competitions. As a result, many IT technologies have been introduced into the NT domain to enhance and optimize the existing processes. 10 years ago, we cannot imagine these kind of changes. We are also experiencing changes in the customer demand. Consumers and enterprise customers are now expecting digital experiences, individualized services, which are instantly provided and usable and changeable. Faced with the such accelerated dynamics, the NT world has a struggle to keep the pace. After a series of consolidations, we are left with only a handful of network vendors that stay in the comfort zone and resist rapid innovations. We want to transform our infrastructure to a new open distributed cloud-based architecture to become a software and data-driven telco. Doing so will bring NT and IT closer together with a holistic view on hardware and software. Our final goal is to implement more agile, flexible, cost-efficient productions. We believe that such change will enable us to have a network optimized for time to market. And how should we do this? It will be based on cloud, disaggregation, orchestration, and open APIs. The end picture is to transform our network towards a simpler and automated production model, enabling the quality of service delivery of 5G enterprise services to real customer problems. We would like to disaggregate the access space with the virtualizations. We are committed to it through ORAN, Open RAN, as we introduce new smaller vendors to accelerate the roadmap of the entire ecosystem, including existing vendors. Orchestration is critical since we have to deal with more complex domains after combination of NT and IT. Given the needs of the end-to-end -end base to manage the quality of service requirements in 5G, the importance of automation and orchestration will only increase as multiple entities have to be managed. We believe that open source will play a critical role here. So at Deutsche Telekom, we are utilizing ONAP, 
the open source based network automation platform to develop a 5G and 10 orchestrator for our network automations. Open API enabling is an important in two ways. One, in a sense that we can import the innovation from outside to optimize our TCO and enhance our service. And the other, in a sense that we can publish innovations built within telco to the outside. For example, what used to be a telco specific network capabilities can now be open up to the third parties and packaged together with their services. This will create a new business model for telcos that was not available before. Now that I shared with you the vision of network differentiations, let's recall my earlier comments about new competitions from hyperscalers and the new better grounds. Here is a SWOT analysis, which helps in order to observe and understand what control points the hyperscalers currently occupy and what they are targeting to occupy in the future. And likewise for the telcos. So what are their control points today for OTTs or hyperscalers? As you can see in this slide, they dominate the device platform, virtual connectivity in IP and above layer protocols, the global scale public cloud, and most notably the developer community. It was the hyperscalers who created the app stores that have become the life blood for the developer community to deliver their apps and services. These are the key strengths of the hyperscalers. Whereas looking at the strengths of the telco community, we have the SIM card, which continues to be an important customer touch point. And of course, we dominate the access network, core network, and peering. Last but not least, the physical layer, the underlay, I call it IP minus layer here, including MPLS. So what's the new better ground where the new opportunities exist? Hyperscalers movements as borne out by Microsoft, Amazon, Google's recent strategic play is to look left in this picture in the direction of on-premise edge, telco edge and network core, focusing specifically on investment on improve the end user's customer experience. Whereas looking at the lower part in this diagram, telco's movement is to look right, focusing on building the telco edge and cultivating partnership with developers. Obviously, the biggest control point for telcos are 5G, network APIs, network slicing provided in a cloud native style telco edge cloud. Having said, let's deep dive into telco edge cloud in the following slide. Cloud used to sit at the data center far away from customers, but edge cloud moves it very near to customers, which brings multiple benefits like a reduced rate, latency, location awareness, security enhancement, and TCO optimizations. We believe that edge cloud is a key control point for telcos to create a new greenfield marketplace. Business models for telcos used to be connectivity and IaaS, but Edge enables new services and new business models, for example, around SLA-based real-time mission-critical application and services for verticals. Other players can also provide the similar services, but we believe telcos are the best positions due to the proximity to the customer. Edge is a game of scale, however. So 
To stay in the game, operators must maximize scale with the multi-operator and multi-cloud approach. The reason why operators lost cloud market to hyperscalers is that we were divided. Developers wanted to have a single interface, preferably standardized API based across all markets. So they went to hyperscalers that can provide the scalability. In the telco edge case, scale is defined by two criteria as shown in this slide that mutually reinforce each other. First, geographical or operator reach. Developers need a market at global scale and like to build on same programming environment they already know. The more operators provide the same APIs to the developers, the more customers can be reached by developers via this platform. Secondly, a rich application and device offering. Consumers and enterprise customers expect a rich and wide offering of application and devices for edge. The operator community can influence and push both effects by collaborating to broaden geographical and operator reach and provide access to a larger customer base and support the needs of multinational enterprise customers. In other words, we need to create an open and global telco edge cloud, which federates across operators and cloud stacks, meaning it should be multi-operator and multi-cloud. If we can create this, then eventually edge applications and devices will work universally. But the edge train is not waiting at the station. As the edge becomes a commercial reality and more players compete in the space, the operators community needs to act fast to stake a claim in the edge value chain by capitalizing on its monetizable assets, like a managed quality of connectivity, network APIs, and proximity to customers. At Deutsche Telekom, we are building the telco edge with the multiple telcos through the GSMA, as well as hyperscalers to deliver standard-based partnership on edge computing. Mobile EdgeX, a new startup, DT founded two years ago in Bay Area for the development of the multi-cloud edge pass software is our first approach toward such delivery. With the multiple parties joining as a shareholders to make it work. As presented to you in my opening video, we recently completed the first Telco Edge cloud trial involving Telefonica and Deutsche Telekom with Mobile Edge X around a latency sensitive AR game with impressive results. And we are now preparing a further trial with partners in the B2B space. To conclude, I sincerely urge the telco community act fast and all together through industry forum like uh, ONM to capture the new opportunities and create new revenue stream while innovating consumer experience. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Alex. Uh, that was very insightful and, and you know, appreciate the video uh, in the, the introductory video. That was pretty cool. Um, I also want to sort of emphasize that uh, uh, we just in, talk, in terms of API, uh, we, we did uh, release uh, from an LF Edge perspective an Acreno API white paper that kind of goes into details of what uh, work has been done so far on the public cloud interface, public cloud telco edge interface. 
you know, whether it's the PaaS API or resource management or things like that. So uh, all good work. And again, uh, from a terminology perspective, Edge Cloud, Service Provider Cloud sort of is, is what is shared and offered as a service. So really exciting work going on at Deutsche Telekom, uh, you know, beyond the orchestration uh, and, and open source support. So with that said, continuing with the theme of Edge, uh, our next uh, keynote is one of, uh, you know, very prominent supporters of uh, open source. Uh, I know it's a little late uh, in, in China, but uh, we have Bill Ren from uh, Huawei, who's the chief open source liaison officer. He has been a very active contributor to the open source community, to open networking and edge summit historically. Uh, great visionary, uh, moving uh, China and uh, pretty much their entire uh, ecosystem forward. Uh, so today he will be obviously talking about uh, 5G and Mac, uh, specifically continuing with our Edge theme today. Uh, so without any uh, further ado, please welcome Bill Ren. This is Bill from Huawei. I'm in charge of the ICT infrastructure open source business. And I'm very glad to here to share my thoughts about the uh, open source. My presentation is unleashing the power of 5G MEC through open source collaboration. So here uh, is, I will talk in three parts. First, I will talk why we need this new relation for production. Second is, is what exactly what we are uh, means this new relation for production for edge computing and how finally to achieve this. Okay, so let's say this uh, unleashing the power of uh, industry from different uh, times. First, in the farming, 8,000 years ago, the cattle was domesticated and uh, but only two, it's only until 2,000 years ago, humans can started to utilize cattle to plow the fields. And until at that time, the efficiency of human production was improved dozens of times. And also similar in the 1679, uh, the first steam engine mode was invented already. But it's only until 1769, when Watt improved the steam engine and put it used in the factory. Then it's it's also uh, the productivity force of steam engine was unleashed, and the human uh, society is from in-house workshop transformed to the fact factory and industry times. So today the 5G area is coming. The 5G network was constructed and deployed all over the world. So we have reason to believe. If we need to unleash the power of 5G, we also need some new relation for production, which could make those industry industry chain from network ecosystem. Here is a transforming um, diagram to, to illustrate how our telco industry is transforming from the traditional communication times to the digital times and as well as to the next uh, uh, intelligent times. We can see the, the different stack of this uh, business from vertical in, uh, integration from telecom based to the middle internet based network and service is decoupled and we support the diversity service based on this uh, pipe pipe and network. We can say this structural value transform is unavoided and the value of this pipe is shared this industry value is, is keep on reducing. But how can we cultivate this new growth of a telco pipeline and uh, uh, grab these growth opportunities on the network side? We believe the edge computing gave us a possible and feasible way to do it. 
But uh, look at back in the past uh, several years in our telco industry, we also build so many uh, developer activities such as uh, developer contest the, uh, and developer campaign, uh, training camp campaign. And uh, we also do a lot of joint innovations. But uh, the industry approach to this is not so effective. Based on the opinions from different staff, like marketing person, person or technical person, some of them are very optimistic. They think we have enough budget, we should uh, do more uh, innovation things. And some of are, are pessimistic. They think uh, uh, we, we lack of uh, uh, talent to do this uh, par paradigm shift. It's very difficult. Just like uh, uh, what we're doing in the uh, things is uh, because we, we didn't have a unified platform. So this innovation achievement in our industry is, is not very high effective. Just like we built this sand castle in the sea beach and we didn't have a closed loop also to business. So the, uh, the project we built is difficult to replicate. There's no drive for this innovation. The industry started for the innovation when when we talk about the innovation, some someone get frustrated. So how can we solve these things? Some some of people think uh, the difficult thing is, is is from is for innovation is for from zero to one or from one to ten. But uh, for us, based on the experience in the past decade. There is never lack of innovation in our industry. The most difficult thing for us is to how to replicate those innovations from 10 to hundreds or even to tens of thousands. So this is a difficult thing to, to do. Here, I'd like to show another talk from, from the famous uh, business leaders like uh, the Jack Ma who is the chairman of Alibaba, who gave a talk in 2017, 10th of September, in the World Internet of Things Ex Exhibition Summit in Wuxi. He think the internet is nothing but just of a relation for production. He talk, if you don't see the internet as production, more and more problems will arise as the internet should not exist only in internet companies. Instead, the internet covers all society. Similarly, we believe for edge computing is also empowers the society. It's not only the, uh, for the carriers, it's for every industry. So how to find the best way to utilize and maximize the value of uh, 5G and uh, user capability of edge computing. It's need a, a productive force for new relational production. Because here we have basic underlying logic is the combination for vendors and carriers and uh, the industry partners. They should ask themselves, what's our value proposition in the industry, in the society? And what kind of value we could create for this society? So that's the thing we, we wanted to say. They need to build a new relational production together. So here is, is my definition of this new relational production based on open source. We want to cope building this platform and share the ecosystem together. It's uh, four things for this new. First is a new collaboration. We need to jointly define this community in the community and verify this uh, uh, thinking and explore all the innovations together based on open source code with the cross domain, uh, with full life cycle streaming learning and from protocols to interaction interface alive. And second is for new de development. We should not only let the ICT industry have developers to do the things, we also need to enable those different industries for their 
users, developers, to develop 5G applications as quick as possible, as cost-effective as possible. We need to lower the barriers for, for entrance. We need to provide the capability for online development and verification. We need to provide this, uh, build their habit and uh, uh, make them to reuse atomic capabilities easily. The third one is a new X system. We need a, a shared uh, industry ab application ecosystem together with a unified market and share those application uh, do the integration and the verification together. The last one is a new transaction. We should also build a community-based application repository to enable this uh, transaction from single transaction to multilateral, multi times, from single supply to mutual supply. Here I will talk one by one. First, new collaboration. You can see as we used to put effort in different direction with different uh, uh, stakeholders, like uh, de application developers, OSS vendors, carriers, device vendors. So. Based on this joint uh, platform and joint uh, open source together, we could explore things uh, based on com consensus from business level and to the operation level. And as well as this platform, even with the technical stack, we should unify it. And finally, the deployment. We all need the consensus because this uh, uh, mutual trust and uh, uh, cost is very high. Second, for the new development, you can see the developers in, in Giti is 3 million, and it's even 10 times uh, uh, bigger in GitHub. And also, the open source software it was used in 99% of our commercial software, so there is no uh, developers could uh, could uh, not far away from open source, so it's so diversified. Second, quickly, how can we quickly uh, let the other industry developers get familiar with these uh, uh, different industries and how to easily get started with 5G capabilities? And how can we make those rich atomic capabilities could, could be easily transform, abstract, convert to industry know-how into industry solutions. And the third one, how can we help to leverage those cross-organization sharing based on the best scenario, best architecture, and the best practice? And of course, finally, this open source platform could uh, help these uh, developers to save their time and the coding and the device investment make the development more cost effective. And uh, the new ecosystem. So we can see this new ecosystem. We need to build this industry ap application ecosystem with a new unified market and shared application. We used to have ecosystem in our industry. But it, it is, is small scale. It's just like pads. It's difficult to replicate these scenarios because it's a fram, fragmented market. So and the uh, efficiency also is also is very low. It's mute, manually integrated and focus on few scenarios and uh, uh, the number is hundreds. But we we do need uh, something like the the red side diagram shows this wild beast. It's more healthy, more self-growth, more diversified, and it should be uh, easily evolved to millions of applications with this unified integration, unified verification, unified market. And this uh, new transaction is also easy to understand. Used, we have this long chain with very limited and single-time transaction. And it's upstream and downstream relationship, point to point, one way supply. But we need, based on this uh, uh, community 
application repository to feed different uh, device vendors carriers vertical industries all together be build this new transaction mode with unlimited short chain and multi-time transaction many to many mutual supply and mutual enhancement relationship and this community-based pre-integration and shared application ecosystem will will help the business grow more fast So that's the new uh, relation for production, what we talk. So that's also why this uh, Edge Gallery open source community exists. Our wish is to build a collaborative and win-win relation for production on this edge computing industry. So our position is to build this de facto standard based on wedge com edge computing architecture and enable openness in the telco field and lower the threshold and the barrier for bring enterprise application on board and form a large scale and build a business to business ecosystem more easily. And basically our value proposition is 5G native connection capability, edge native architecture and diversified and open ecosystem. Just like this page shows, this is our value proposition. And the first 5G native connection, we will make this 5G capabilities accessible everywhere easily. We will make sure this communication uh, community provides this interconnected with the latest live 5G network elements as easy as possible, and it will be compliant to the latest ETSI standards and make use of the a high performance data plan and the value added network capabilities. Of course, based on cloud native capabilities, we do think there's a need for the edge native architecture because in the edge, the resources are more limited. We should have this lightweight resource management capabilities. We should have this full stack security mechanism. We also should have this reliable management and operation capability be available. And the third one is we need this diversity and open ecosystem, make the application developers uh, more easily to develop and make, make sure the application unbound more easily and uh, replicate more easily. So that simplify the development and convenient this verification and the unified application portals as well as this uh, share this ecosystem with, uh, with this marketplace. And here is our architecture. Basically, it, which has this uh, application uh, edge platform is a key in the right hand side, based on this uh, API gateway, based on this uh, local openings capabilities for network, as well as this uh, uh, data plan. And of course, in the middle, there's a management plan for orchestration and application. Um, distribution report, repository capability as well in the uh, left side. And uh, finally, is this uh, for developers, we need a very user-friendly uh, developer uh, environment. And uh, the uh, bottom is a basic uh, uh, technical stack. And uh, in the past uh, several months, in this edge gallery community, we have almost more than 30 applications covered different scenarios like smart camps, industry manufacturer, transportation, the logistics, and the competitive gaming. And another thing, interesting thing for the edge gallery open source community is besides this community of source code, of a wiki, of a document. We also provide this uh, very uh, uh, comprehensive laboratory infrastructure for, for the partners, for the developers to, to verify, to develop their applications because 5G uh, infrastructure and uh, network is quite costly for the 
uh, normal developers for the small uh, business uh, uh, developers to, to afford. So the value to communities is we provide this live 5G end-to-end -end verification environment. We provide this automatic integration and platform and the test results can be easily applied for any time. And uh, we expect the value for this laboratory in the future, we could uh, publish more white paper, more test report, more test industry index for, for guiding this industry to move forward to the uh, business, to uh, enable the business uh, uh, more prosperous. Okay, so for edge gallery col collaboration with the industry organization is of course is very very uh, needed. So we we have a very uh, uh, good relationship with Linux Foundation edge community, and uh, one of the uh, blueprint in the Acrino release three, which which is provided by China Mobile by Tencent and Huawei together. Of course, we also complied with the ETI standards. We also willing to cooperate with the GSMA open platform and some others like 5G DNA Association, Edge Computing Association and the Industry uh, Interconnection Association as well. So for Edge Gallery expectation, I think this year is, of course, we need more diversified developers, more diversified uh, governance structures, more active developers, more applications, more uh, lab infrastructures to enable more IT plus IT value added service. And in the future, we think uh, the communication partners, we need uh, uh, this uh, uh, platform to more help for our developers to do more research for the edge computing area. For so it's the right time to build this industry platform together. Let's embrace and for this explosive growth for the 5G MEC market. You can see uh, here I provide this uh, uh, for for you to to access for our website for our community and for our uh, wiki and the chat group. So I wish all us can can work together to make sure uh, we have a better future. Okay, thank you. That's my part. Thank you, Bill. And I really appreciate you staying past midnight uh, for this. Uh, again, you know, the advantage of this is you're jet lagged, but not after a 20 hour flight. So thank you. Um, I also love the concepts of kind of bringing out the relationship between uh, sort of the industries and uh, the various organizations within uh, an end user or a telecom provider. So love the concept and, you know, great example of a vendor stepping up utilizing open source technologies, but more importantly, building on tap to drive innovation forward. So really excited. Thank you very much. Uh, our next uh, keynote uh, is is uh, on the other side of the world, obviously one of the top leaders in telecom, IT, networking, you name it, but uh, it's from IBM. Um, uh, and now Marissa needs no introduction, but she's the vice president of strategy uh, and offerings at uh, IBM. Uh, they have the telecom media and entertainment group. Uh, she's spearheading a lot of the uh, 5G, a lot of edge and a lot of uh, ecosystem development. And uh, she's gonna pull it all together in terms of an end-to-end -end, uh, telecom network, what's needed, what's the challenges. Uh, and you are starting to see a theme here on, on how uh, vendors are stepping up beyond uh, the classic, you know, I contributed a spec in a code or or something like that. So without any uh, further ado, uh, please welcome uh, Marissa from uh, IBM.
How are telcos delivering on the promise of speed and reliability when it matters most? Service providers are leveraging new open cloud-based solutions, the same solutions that will enable edge computing and pave the way for 5G. They're answering a global need for connection to essential resources, from first responders and field hospitals, to customer care and remote capabilities for work and education. As industries continue to reshape the working infrastructure, telecom companies are moving to operate as a platform business, expanding their role as both digital service providers and digital service enablers. By tapping into the combined capability of IBM and Red Hat's hybrid cloud, telcos can more rapidly develop new services and deploy them wherever they need to run. Telecommunication companies are making the technology decisions and investments to be the platform provider or innovation catalyst, at the extent to which they can innovate with the ecosystem to provide applications and services that businesses and individuals can consume. That is where the magic happens within the industry. Hello, my name is Marisa Viveros. I lead strategy and solutions for telecommunications and media industry within IBM. In the next 20 minutes, I would like to share with you how IBM, Red Hat, and a number of other partners are innovating with clients to modernize the networks. I will share with you some guiding principles, technologies, and ecosystem, as well as recent implementations which are already in production. At the core of this development, open source is playing a key role. Let's begin now with understanding of what IBM brings to operators today. Our goal is to improve business outcomes. And we do that by focusing on three key imperatives, digital engagement, network and platforms, and enterprise transformation. In digital engagement, we're very focused on bringing IBM Watson to help in all of the interactions that our clients have with their subscribers, whether it is customer care, agent assist, or interactions in marketing, demand generation, um, ordering processes, and others using data architectures and AI and, ad and machine learning to those processes in order to make them most efficient and most contemporary. In network and platform, we are very focused on, and we have a history of applying operations uh, in the network with our network technology and other algorithms that we have applied throughout time with many of our clients. Operating the network as well as bringing our services capabilities and experience that allow clients to really modernize the network operation centers. We're very focused on network modernization and that will be at the core of what I'll be sharing with you today. Modernizing those networks, leveraging Red Hat and leveraging a number of other partners in that endeavor. In enterprise transformation, focus on modernizing HR processes, supply chain management, and many other processes that are at the core of how companies can perform in a much better and effective manner. So let's now dive into some guiding principles that we leave are essential in order to modernize and to realize a modern network. We start with uh, open architectures. Open architectures that will allow us to move from an appliance-based systems uh, into a more software integration architecture. We believe that here, we need to leverage the open source community, the upstream scale, and provide the single virtual infrastructure manager that, of course, for us, will be based on OpenStack and Red Hat OpenStack or Red Hat OpenShift as we move into containerized network functions. 
of course, within this domain, there will be new skills that we need to bring to bear. See ICD practices, uh, DevOps practices, agile methodologies, all of those methodologies developed in the IT world that now are transferring into the telco domain in a much simpler way, given the experience that we have in the IT area. Industry standards. Industry standards where we are leveraging Etsy and the five plus years that there are in Etsy working in defining the network function virtualization specs, uh, along with probably many of you participating in that. 3GPP that has been at the core of developing 5G and the new networks that we will see uh, in the future along with edge computing. Adopting industry standards, we believe that that will guarantee that the interoperability, the APIs and the open interfaces that our clients need in order to move into a more modernized and reliable uh, network infrastructure. The third area is extreme automation and security. Uh, extreme automation from the point of view of lifecycle management, of orchestration and assurance that all of these in a collective manner will now play a key role when it comes to day zero, day one or day two of an operation. Allowing to guarantee the real-time optimization and bringing you know, the ecosystem uh, within that uh, and making that you know, much more of a reality. Lastly, deliver total cost of ownership with agility, creating and realizing new value by having these common infrastructures, but also by allowing to have new enterprise services that our clients can use in order to create a new revenue stream. So at the core is modernizing the network for consumers, for new services, uh, video and others, but also creating new services uh, for enterprises such that telecommunication companies are more relevant to the enterprise can bring higher value as, as enterprises move into Industry 4.0 technology-oriented uh, solutions. Creating a modern telecom network, we believe that it requires the same platform at the core of the network and VRAN and at the edge to ease management of the infrastructure and the applications. In addition, the growing number of smart devices, the need for faster processing, and the increased pressure on the networks is driving the adoption of a more comprehensive architecture that supports devices and extends the cloud to the edge, providing decentralized processing power, distributed cloud, and offline reliability. Early this year, IBM announced IBM Cloud Satellite as the beta program. IBM Cloud Satellite allows us to do some of those uh, areas that I mentioned before. Enables users to manage applications across public and private environments with a single uh, pane of glass. Allowing for flexibility of the infrastructure, as a service operations, secure connectivity, and application lifecycle management. With IBM Satellite, users can get the IBM Cloud Catalog, including Manage OpenShift, Data, and DevOps, and much more, all in the user's own data center with full SRE operations. In this case, users do not need to be experts in running cloud environments or cloud services. Automation is also an important piece of this puzzle. Automating and operating services at the scale, at the lower cost, and with full predictability. Onboarding VNFs, onboarding CNFs in the future as we those become available, and automating with a single CICD lifecycle. Design and test zero-touch provisioning and network slicing becomes critical to deliver 
zero one services. And when it comes to now the ongoing operations, change management, uh, closed loop operations, anomaly detections in a normal in an automated remediation is key to have the single automation across the design, the implementation, as well as the uh, operation of the network. So we have been very focused on aligning with ONAP and other key developments in the industry in, in adopting automation and creating software as well, supportive software, as well as services that allow us to implement that. Now, the ecosystem, it is critical and fundamental to the telecom industry and, by the way, to many other industries. Pre-integrated, pre-tested solutions are the desire of every company. That, that's the only way that we can accelerate time to market. Therefore, IBM has been building an ecosystem at all layers of the stack. And so we are inviting companies uh, to, that are not currently present uh, in, in this slide to join us in certifying their software on OpenShift certifying uh, their software on IBM Cloud and becoming part of the catalog that we offer to many of the clients and the catalog that we use in order to build uh, new services uh, for our clients. Lastly, uh, open source. For decades, IBM has been partnering with Linux Foundation uh, to advance open source software in the whole industry uh, in general. The network domain is no different. And in fact, we have joined uh, OPNFE in, in 2014. We continue with ONAP, uh, which translated then the umbrella uh, Linux Foundation Networking, key members of that, leading some of the, the, the activities there. And most recently, we recognize the interest of our clients on DIP, which is primarily an operator, operator's led uh, activity joining some of the working group there and doing some of the experimentation in our labs and obviously also uh, recently joined the ORAN Alliance, recognizing that the last part of the network that will be virtualized is the radio, is the access layer. So the radio access networks will be virtualized. And in fact, many of our partners are in, in, the, in, the, in the path already of implementing that and making that a reality. We will now go into some of the examples that we are seeing and delivering um, in production within the industry. The Open Universal Hybrid Cloud is a hybrid cloud platform that is based on open technology and open standards from IBM and from Red Hat, along with 14 other partners. It enables Vodafone Idea to better serve nearly 300 million subscribers by simplifying and transforming its IT and telecom network operation. The new platform is deployed across many distributed Vodafone Idea cloud microsites across India, as well as the central IT operations which today are also run by IBM. Some of the benefits that Vishan Vora, the CTO of Vodafone Idea, is getting is he claims 85% reductions in cap CapEx, 50% reduction in OPEX, and 90% reduced cost of production of the goods. You know, this is just one example that is, is getting you know, more and more visibility within the market. With over 400 million subscribers and increased market pressure, Barty Airtel has the vision of building a common infrastructure with carrier-grade VIM, with, with having automation and a partner ecosystem. Functions like virtual IMS Visual APC and many other of the componentry that needs to be to build a network is getting implemented here now in production. IBM role within this particular scenario has been as a system integrator. IBM innovation in building 
automation uh, and methodologies that allow us to increase that automation, reduce our cost, and, and, time to, and reduce time to deploying. Uh, we are very proud of these two examples because it represents something that it has been work and set in the industry and now is being implemented and deployed in production. So very proud of, to serve more than over 700 million subscribers uh, with these uh, solutions. What takes me to the next example? Technologies like 5G and Edge are poised to play a huge role in building the future of virtually every single industry. Enhanced by artificial intelligence, these technologies promise to deliver low latency, high performance computing, and the service and the security requirements that many in the interest need in order to stay competitive. The Italian government uh, sponsored operators in a number of cities across the country to deploy 5G, and it's also partnering with more than 100 companies in order to build services and applications that their citizens can use. In this case, we have worked with Vodafone Italy. Our role has been in building specific use cases and services that citizens can use. Among those are uh, safety and surveillance in a train station, looking for bad actors and bad agents in a train station, uh, education, working with universities in order to deliver uh, education where the students need it. Uh, healthcare for simple services. And um, agriculture and a, and a few others. So now we're making 5G edge computing real not only for operators but also for citizens of a government. By the way, many governments across the world have similar intent of supporting and adopting 5G and sponsoring programs that will promote 5G within the countries. Even in lower risk settings, such as retail shops, 5G and edge can help stores analyze supply chain data, detect um, spoilage, uh, or monitor metrics like crowd density that will ad otherwise overwhelm the networks without edge computing. We are really proud of these examples that are about building the network, but also building now solutions and services that citizens and every one of us uh, can use. And most important, increasing the revenue streams of our clients as they make investments to modernize and progress you know, their infrastructure. Finally, I would like to thank you for attending this session. I encourage you to, to visit uh, the IBM virtual booth where we will have some 5G implementations for demonstration and uh, in, enjoy the rest of the conference. Most important, stay safe and healthy. Thanks again. Thank you, Marissa. Uh, that was great. And by the way, I don't know, uh, you know, uh, how many attendees picked up uh, a glimpse of the book that was sitting behind your your desk. Uh, it, it said making the world better. How relevant in the recent times. But anyway, let's talk about open. Let's talk about open source. Really like the fact that you focused on uh, industry verticals, food, hospitality, manufacturing. And I think we as an industry, networking and edge industry, now need to look beyond the 1.3 and the MPLS headers and the protocols that you know made us all geeks and look beyond what we can do as an industry. So thank you very much. Um, uh, to wrap things up for today, um, uh, is is one of uh, you know Google's own senior product manager in Google Cloud, 
Uh, she heads up uh, the portfolio, including uh, telco, modernization, edge computing, content delivery, modern apps, etc. You heard from Amol yesterday uh, during my keynote, and you will hear a lot more details about uh, you know Google uh, and Google Cloud in general today. Um, and 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 Projecta is going to talk about uh, how cloud native telco and five G and edge come together. So please welcome Projecta Joshi. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I'm really excited to be here talking about accelerating the journey to cloud native telco and effortless edge. Now, synergies between telco, cloud, and enterprise are growing exponentially. In fact, if you think of the last one year, it's been exciting to see telcos and public cloud providers beginning to come together in ways we would not even have imagined four or five years ago. As an industry, we have three big opportunities to tap into. First is working with telcos to transform their IT network and services. Now this is going to be fueled by leveraging the best of technologies, experience and talent that telcos, public cloud providers like Google Cloud, ISPs and others have with all of us becoming better in the process. The second major opportunity is around delivering value to enterprises with 5G, 4G edge computing solutions and 5G as a business services platform. Now, this will create new revenue streams for the broader ecosystem. The third is as much an opportunity as a necessity to enable the first two opportunities. It's about breaking down the silos that have existed between the network and services platforms, paradigms, service orchestration, automation, and more used by telcos and public cloud providers. It's also about jointly building pieces that don't exist yet. That's how we can unlock seamless delivery of services across a global distributed edge and cloud. What does it really mean to help telcos transform to a telco cloud? First, it's about helping telcos build their IT cloud by bringing telco IT workloads like OSS, VSS, and data analytics to cloud. This is the sweet spot for public cloud providers like Google Cloud because these workloads are very enterprise-like. For the telco network cloud, we need to take cloud to telco locations where the network cloud is typically deployed. The goal here is to bring cloud and cloud native technologies to help telcos build a capex and opex efficient network, including for 5G. The third is about helping telcos build new revenue streams with an enterprise services cloud offering 5G, 4G and edge computing solutions for enterprises. Telco IT, network and enterprise services clouds represent a multi-billion dollar opportunity for telcos, public cloud providers and partners over the next two to three years. More broadly, telcos will increasingly become public cloud first, where they will operate new workloads, projects, processes, and public cloud first. And of course, the telco cloud will increasingly use the global infrastructure, edges, and regions of public cloud providers like Google for optimizing economics. Now at a very high level, generally, enabling telco IT means bringing IT to cloud. Generally, Enabling telco network means bringing cloud to wherever the network is. And enabling enterprise services is about running solutions where it is optimal and bringing connectivity and cloud to these solutions. To do this, we need open, scalable, resilient network and services platforms that can work across telco, cloud, and edge. A few additional observations. VMs, containers, heterogeneous northbound and southbound, multi-provider, multi-cloud, and increasingly multi-edge are a fact of life in most telcos, clouds, and enterprises. Orchestration network and service management needs to be able to support this heterogeneity. There is no one edge. Platforms need to work across a global distributed edge and cloud continuum. For running network functions and edge computing for solutions, we need integrated stacks, not closed boxes. These integrated stacks should bundle hardware, OS, accelerators, CPUs, GPUs, platforms that provide container or services management or services orchestration, and of, of obviously the network functions or say AIML models, and provide these instead of closed proprietary boxes. With this, we get the ease of a box, but without the lock-in. Observability, analytics, and automation are table stakes. We need them at every layer and also at an aggregated level, as well as end-to-end -end across the entire deployment 
coupled with closed loop automation. We really need to start focusing more on abstracting out complexity. So let me give you two simple examples. We need an effortless edge which delivers automated placement of work workloads based on desired outcomes. And it, it's continuously optimizing the placement if that's desired. Effortless specs. Now, while I'm half joking here, I think there's a huge value to doing this. The idea is inspired by tools in Google Cloud called Explainable AI. Explainable AI tools tell you why a machine learning model generated a certain recommendation. Similarly, we need explainable AI for HC 3GPP and many of our own specs, which map our standards and specifications to real world solutions and to existing open APIs or the other way around. These specs are very important, no doubt, but there's a huge opportunity for simplification and mapping them to benefits they can deliver, thereby making them easier to adopt. Coming back to the consistent cloud native network and services platform that we need. There are three core technologies that are important. Containers, so for example, open source Kubernetes, which is the de facto industry standard, and say the Google managed GKE. Service Mesh, where for example, Istio is the open service mesh, and Traffic Director ASM as open Google managed service mesh. And then you've got serverless, where you've got open source Knative, or say a Google managed cloud run. Anthos from Google Cloud is actually a great example of a consistent cloud-native platform. It layers container management, service management, and server serverless into a modular platform, so you can use the layers that are important to you. Anthos couples these with policy and config management, along with CI-CD, observability, analytics, and automation. It preserves the open interfaces and APIs for Google-managed layers. You can use Anthos anywhere, on-prem, Google Cloud, in AWS and more. Anthos continues to re evolve rapidly to support new telco and edge use cases. Now we're all familiar with Kubernetes, so I'm not going to deep dive into that. I do want to talk a bit more about service mesh. Like what really is a service mesh? Uh, think a few years back, now you had all of these complex network appliances and then came software defined networking or SDN. And it disaggregated these closed complex appliances into a control plane and a data plane. The data planes were simple and forwarded traffic. These data planes were controlled by a sophisticated control plane. Now think of a service mesh as software defined networking for services. You take a complex application, remove all networking code from it. So you extract this out and you move it to a sidecar service proxy. Now you need to need a way to configure control and apply policies to these proxies. And that's why you need a service mesh control plane. One of the biggest benefits of service mesh is that it decouples development from operations. Developers no longer need to write and maintain policies and networking code inside their applications. Service mesh does not make any assumptions about where your service is or whether it is instantiated on VMs or containers or bare metal. And that's why it provides a framework that can be used consistently across multi-cloud deployments across heterogeneous VM and container environments. What are the use cases for service mesh? So the first one is to simplify networking architecture and deploy advanced traffic management capabilities. So think canaries, blue green, circuit breaking, mirroring very easily. Second is to enhance security and encrypt all data in transit by automatically using MTLS on all calls within the mesh. Third is to ensure more uptime, safer rollouts, and lower time to resolution with logs, telemetry, and traces gathered for every service in the mesh. Service mesh enables you to specify traffic management, security, and observability policies at the service level in a compute agnostic manner. One use case of service mesh is obviously then to manage a mixed environment of VM and container services. There's also a related use case, which is to migrate VM-based services to container services using cap grow drain strategy. Now in the past, if you think of it, telcos had MPLS networks that they wanted to migrate to optical. They started doing this using a strategy called cap grow drain. In fact, this was a term I heard from AT&T and ONF. So you cap your MPLS networks, you grow your optical, and then you drain existing MPLS to optical. The same applies to transition from VM to container services. You continue to support existing deployment with VM orchestration. Then you introduce a platform like Anthos for all new containerized deployments, and then slowly drain VM-based services to Anthos 
driven container services. In the interim period, when telcos have both VM-based services and Anthos-based containerized services, these can exist, uh, coexist very seamlessly, and they can also interact with each other at the service mesh layer, since service mesh is compute agnostic. Service mesh is a key paradigm for 5G core service-based architectures. SPA provides a modular framework from which common applications can be deployed using components from one or more providers. In 3GPP-defined SPA, control plane functionality is delivered with a set of interconnected network functions, and that's why service mesh is a very good paradigm for connecting and managing these network functions as services in the mesh. We continue to evolve service mesh as a paradigm, so I'll give you an example. Adopting a service mesh has traditionally meant running sidecar proxies in the data plane that handle networking on behalf of your applications. Now, proxies do consume resources, and those may start to add up as you scale to hundreds or thousands of proxies. For high-performance telco and edge applications, this may make it difficult to meet the performance targets when you're sending requests through multiple sidecar proxies. So for high-performance use cases, we built out a proxyless gRPC flavor of services with our Traffic Director Service Mesh offering. And to make these proxyless services possible, we, we, what we did is we added the open XDS API support, which is used for Envoy Proxy, to the most recent version of gRPC. So we do need to keep evolving our paradigms as well. Now, in addition to everything we discussed, what are some of the new problems we can partner to solve as an industry? If you take a broader view of where we are as an industry, we are just getting started, and we have many things to solve together. So while we are making great headway on creating consistent cloud-native network and services platforms and evolving them, we need to do more to abstract out complexity and manage heterogeneity better. We need to get to the point where our network services and slices automatically scale and optimize, are proactively secure, and effortless to administer and use. Uh, let's take the effortless edge problem. Now, basically, the edge is distributed. To harness the power of this distributed edge, I, as a telco, or as a public cloud provider, or as an enterprise, should be able to leverage any of these edges in addition to my own, based on my own business and technical requirements. I should be able to move my services from an edge it is deployed at to another edge, say so to bring it closer to the end user or lower cost. I should be able to deploy a service that spans multiple edges. So for example, take the case of machine learning, where for my services, I may do small amounts of processing on the user's device, which then connects up to a telco central office for scrubbing, which then connects up to Google Cloud machine learning models at Google's edge. I should also be able to chain services which are deployed across a variety of edges so I can leverage best of breed services from a variety of providers for my end customer, or maybe I want to create a slice across this continuum. And I should be able to do all of this as easily as possible without having to know where the edges are and without needing deep technical knowledge. Let's talk about another interesting problem that we could solve together. This is to partner on effortless network slicing at scale. Yes. Network slicing is happening in experimental set setups and at small limited scale, but to fully unleash the monetization of network slicing, we are missing a few abstraction layers. I will describe one such layer. It is the ability to treat everything as a service. Today, it's possible to treat, for example, entities in a service mesh easily as a service, but what about third-party opaque services or legacy services that sit outside the mesh? We've started the work on extending the service abstraction across all of these as well, and adding also a few other capabilities. And we are doing this with telcos, ISVs, and other partners, and we look forward to collaborating with all of you on this as well. Now, coming to the most important part, monetization of these cloud-native networks and new, and new revenue streams for the entire ecosystem will be driven by delivering 5G, 4G edge computing solutions and 5G as a business services platform for enterprises. When Google entered the mobile market with Android in 2007, it reshaped the industry in a fundamental way. At the end of 2010, Android OS became the world's largest smartphone platform. Android became successful because it offered three key elements. Android is the common platform, its ability to run on a variety of devices and form factors, say ranging from cell phones to laptops to TVs, and most importantly, monetization for the entire Android ecosystem 
through apps built on Android and run on a variety of devices. We believe the Android strategy is also key for, for the entire ecosystem to tap into monetization. And we call this strategy Global Mobile Edge Cloud or GMAC strategy. So it's not a product, it's a strategy. There are three key elements to it. First, there's a portfolio of 5G edge solutions that we are all going to build together. Second is a common platform. Now these solutions need to be built on a common cloud native platform. So for example, we are providing Anthos an open cloud native platform to help you build, deploy, and securely manage these new network centric 5G, 4G edge solutions anywhere. Third is the edge infrastructure. We envision deploying these solutions and the open platform on a global distributed edge, one which spans telco edge, Google edge, customer edge, and more. We also aim to amplify the telco edge footprint with Google's global edge, including Google's edge in telcos. We can bring a multitude of benefits to the enterprise and industry verticals. We can enable infrastructure takeout from enterprise locations without impacting the user experience. In a pandemic stricken world with slash budgets, we can enable enterprises to avoid CapEx heavy investments for their premises by leveraging edge and cloud. For a different set of use cases, we can bring reliable, dedicated, private 5G, 4G network to enterprise with local control, local access to data, and local decisions for real-time ops. As network slicing at scale becomes available, many of these use cases can also be served by vertical-specific slices from telcos and other providers. We can help deliver low latency or high bandwidth for real-time apps like gaming and media. We can also bring compute analytics, AI, ML to the edge of the network, which is close to the user or the workload. And we can deliver solutions that are tailored to the specific needs, say, of an industry vertical. For example, here's an initial set of areas that we think all of us can productize and monetize in the next one to two years. First is the dedicated private 5G enterprise solutions. We call them connected solutions. There's also LTE here. Then the telco network edge solutions, we call them smart edge solutions. There is media and gaming, and then there's effortless edge. Now private 5G, 4G brings the 5G, 4G stack and edge computing to the customer's premises to help build out a dedicated network. This category delivers solutions like connected warehouse, connected manufacturing, connected mining, connected venue, and connected learning. Google is active in CBRS and has tools like SaaS and Network Planner, which are useful for the industry. As network slicing at scale becomes a reality, many of these solutions can be delivered using these slices. Second category of solutions is SmartX, which is smart retail, smart airport, smart transportation. This is about bringing cloud and cloud capabilities to the telco network edge and implementing it with Google Edge and regions. Solutions like smart cities are often smart connected, which means they leverage both private 5G, 4G on customer edge and edge computing at the telco or the Google network edge. Our third category is media and gaming, which includes cloud CDN, Stadia solutions, and Stadia solutions. In fact, Stadia, our low latency born in the cloud gaming solution, is a perfect use case for 5G and Edge. Effortless Edge, which I mentioned multiple times before, is about abstracting all of the edges and services from enterprise, telco, partner, and Google developers, and presenting simple outcomes-based interface and controls to them. Imagine saying, run my workload, uh, not in the specific set of edges, but saying, for example, uh, here is the latency I need, or here are the geos that I want to serve my content in, and then have your workload automatically get deployed across one or more of these edges. To ensure that 5G, 4G solutions that we co-develop actually solve real business problems and deliver the three E's, experience, economics, and ease of use, we need to define and build these in a triad that includes the end customer, along with layering in ISVs, content providers, MSPs, SIs, and device providers as needed. The time is right to transform together. There's a strong win-win for telcos and public cloud providers like Google Cloud, driven by synergies and transformation to telco cloud and monetization via enterprise. Let's build on this momentum. Partners, so your ISVs, GSIs, and others are critical to transformation and monetization. Let's also enable their transformation. Let's demand open. It's really about ease, economics, and choice. Contributing back to open source is key. Preserving open interfaces for managed commercial products is key. We need to get to everything is a service. It will enable many things, including network slicing at scale. To do this, 
we need to push and expand paradigms like service mesh and also ensure that whatever we build is built for heterogeneity. As an industry, we are actually not known for abstracting out complexity. Let's fix this. Effortless specs, effortless networks, effortless edge, effortless services. These are all very critical features that we as an industry need to invest in. And with all of this, we also need to bring transformation around diversity, equity, and inclusion in our industry. Yesterday, Google Cloud joined Linux Foundation networking at the platinum level. We look forward to not only bringing the best of Google to the industry, but continuing to collaborate with and learn from telcos, partners, open source organizations, and the broader industry to transform together. Thank you, everyone. Very cool, very cool, and very insightful. So thank you, Projecta, for your insightful keynote. Um, I'll probably have to go and uh, read some of these things again. Very, very good. Um, and the community is looking forward to Google's participation, uh, specifically on, on projects that are on the top of Anthos, like ONAP and others. So really looking forward to that. So with that, our keynote sessions uh, are done for today. Uh, two things I want to highlight. First is breakout sessions start at 1.45. Um, and then a second call out for those of you who missed it in my initial talk was uh, we have a very interesting uh, mingle with the LF networking and LF edge board session that uh, you know Will Townsend from Moose Insight will host. Uh, anybody can join, so it's it's exactly at 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, do join. I know some of the folks from from Asia will wake up very early for that, but we're looking forward to that, and we're looking for the final day of keynotes tomorrow. So with that, uh, thank you. Take a break. Enjoy the rest of the conference, and don't forget to visit all the technical showcases, booths, and demos. Thank you.